Mentioning Iran raises another issue of transatlantic importance that has been in the headlines of late, missile defense. Some media reporting about this issue has promoted a misunderstanding of the administration's approach. And just in case there's any confusion, I want to use this opportunity to set the record straight. Headlines that state Obama scraps missile defense were wrong. Indeed, given an updated assessment of the threat of short and medium range ballistic missiles from Iran, the administration altered our approach. We concluded that the plan developed during the Bush administration to deploy 10 interceptors in Poland would not be the most effective against medium range ballistic missiles that could reach Europe. We instead want to rely on a new, different kind of interceptor, the standard missile three, to be the core of a phased adaptive approach. This can be deployed immediately to defend Europe and forward-based U.S. forces. It's also consistent with NATO's missile defense efforts and provides opportunities in the future for enhanced international collaboration. And one more remark on this topic. The administration's new concept was not about Russia. Abandoning the previous missile defense, missile defense plan simply to make Russia happy would not have been smart, either on grounds of principle or effectiveness. But if our new approach to missile defense leads to a more constructive relationship with Moscow, of course, all the better. President Obama early on announced his desire to reset our relationship with Russia. Russia. We believe we can have a constructive relationship in areas where we have common interests, even while disagreeing in areas where we do not. Thus, the United States welcomes Austria's cooperation in reducing our nuclear arsenals. And yet, we continue to disagree on NATO enlargement or about Georgia and its sovereignty and its territorial integrity. We also have concerns about the course of Russian reforms and believe that all of us who share the transatlantic community's common values need to continue to engage with all aspects of Russian society across the board on these questions. Regarding energy, another topic of mutual interest, the U.S. welcomes the inter intergovernmental agreement on the Nabucco pipeline project reached last summer, as you all know, by Austria, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, and Turkey. This agreement was a significant milestone in achieving a shared vision of opening a new corridor to bring Caspian gas to Europe. Energy security is gained through greater diversity, both of sources and of routes. But a pipeline is not a panacea. While we work for a more secure future, let us not lose sight of the fact that Europe needs Russian energy. Indeed, the world needs Russian energy, which means energy security ultimately must be a joint endeavor. On Turkey, the Obama administration, like its predecessors, continues to believe that this important nation should be anchored in the European Union. We recognize that we are not members of the EU and that this is a European decision. But regardless of where one stands on possible Turkish membership in the EU, we should be able to agree that this large, dynamic, strategic country deserves our careful attention and that Turkish society and Europe both have benefited from the EU's engagement with Turkey. Overall, the United States remains committed to our alliance with Europe and believes it is the cornerstone of American foreign policy as it has been for the last 60 years. We are even more committed because our European partners have grown broader and stronger. As Vice President Biden said in Bucharest a couple of weeks ago, the United States cannot succeed without you. And we do not believe that you can succeed without us. So I have cited several large and complex topics, plenty of material for questions, comments, no doubt, but let me conclude with just a few more observations. As Austria prospered and matured in this last century, it contributed greatly to stability and progress in the world. I already mentioned 
Austria's trade and economic activities in transforming economies in Eastern Europe. As difficult as these activities may seem at the current moment in the crisis, they have been important. We have a very important and common interest in keeping political and economic reform continuing and on track in Eastern Europe. Similarly, we value Austria's diplomatic and military commitment in the Western Balkans. Likewise, Austria's contribution of peacekeeping forces in the Golan Heights and in Chad have been important as well. I mention Austria's support in these various international endeavors because of the good number of students in this audience from many countries, including Austria. As you move forward in your chosen careers in this new century, I hope you will consider how you can help your country grasp new opportunities to assist other peoples and nations in facing the challenges of the 21st century. In his UN address, President Obama said, quote, we must embrace a new era of engagement based on mutual interest and mutual respect, and our work must begin now, end quote. Well, engagement, my friends, requires partners. The United States welcomes Austria as one of ours. Thank you.